joining us today. Uh, Coach Waldron is going to uh, start off by saying a few words, and then uh, we will open it up to questions. So, Coach, uh, floor is yours. Coach, you're muted. Bro. And just a reminder to everyone to uh, mute themselves. Go. Hey, there's there's the uh, the standard start to these Zoom things, right? I was the I'm the guy that was uh, muted. All right, so just want to start off by saying I appreciate you guys joining me for this. Uh, first thing I'd like to to mention is just my appreciate appreciation and uh, you know for Pete Carroll and John Schneider and how great they were with this process uh, with the interview and and getting a chance to know each other and really start that that relationship and build it throughout the process and and then everything is has culminated with with this great opportunity to join the Seattle Seahawks and their organization and, and be the offensive coordinator. You know, I couldn't be more fired up personally, get a chance to get back up to the, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I know my wife, Megan, and, and my two daughters, Laney and Riley, you know, they're fired up. They're, they're ready to jump in the car and drive right up I-5 right now and, and get there. Uh, obviously we got some, some things we need to work through with these, with these times and, and being safe and, and being aware of how we're going to do that. But, the 12s are going to have uh, uh, three more people. It'll be right there with them, ready to rock and roll. Um, you know, the other thing is kind of be remiss. My, you know, my parents are up there. It's a, as close as I've ever been to them. It's my mom's birthday today. So I, I have to say happy birthday. Uh, but my mom and my dad have been so instrumental and so helpful along the way in, in really forming, uh, you know, or developing my beliefs and being such a great foundation for, for where I've come from. You know, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about, because, you know, this is a relationship driven business and there's there's great friends and great people that you meet along the way. And no one really goes at this alone. And I think, you know, Sean McVay, the, the uh, things he's done for me, both from our, our friendship, uh, being a colleague, being a mentor and really providing me a platform to grow and develop in this business has been so instrumental to leading me to this opportunity. And I, I get it. There's a uh, there's a competitive nature that all of a sudden just uh, switch sidelines with this thing. But with Sean and, and with with Les and Kevin and the rest of the Rams organization, along with all those coaches and players, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. And, and I am so appreciative, but also ready to compete and, and ready to get after this 2021 season with the Seahawks. So all that being said, I'd, I'd like to turn it over and ready to answer uh, one or two questions. Thank you. All right, Ian Furness, why don't you uh, start us off? Shane, uh, during the process, the interview process, and your conversations with Pete Carroll, did he give you an indication of how autonomous you'll be as a play caller, how much he gets involved in the offense of either game planning or in-game play calling, and maybe just talk about what, what all of that entails in terms of how you're going to be working as an offensive coordinator and how much input he's going to have pre-game and also in-game? Sure. No, I've talked to, uh, to Pete a bunch about this throughout the process. Uh, you know, he has my back fully supportive uh, with what I want to do and what direction we want to take this thing together. Uh, so it will be a, a situation where I feel like I'm, I'm walking into a great scenario with a bunch of, of great coaches that, that have such a, a solid foundation um, from, from Coach Carroll right on down through the rest of the, the, the men on the offensive staff uh, that I'll get a chance to work with. And you know, the way I'm looking at this thing, it's like any other uh, part of football size. And it's not just about the guys carrying the ball. It's going to be all 11, every play, uh, cognizant of the ball, cognizant of what their role is within the play and how they can protect the football. Uh, number two is, is we're going to be a fundamentally sound offense. You know, I think, uh, you know, from the start of Pee Wee football all the way up to the professional level, uh, it's, it's, it's a great game and it's always based on fundamentals. And I don't think that can get lost uh, just because, you know, you're, you're getting higher and higher up as far as the competition and the, and the level of players. So it's going to be a fundamentally sound group uh, that's going to be bought in together, working well together. And, and uh, you know, we're not going to let a day go by where we're not working on one of the fundamental core beliefs of our offense, whether it's blocking, whether it's catching the ball, it's the, uh, exact detail in which we're going to take a handoff or the exact detail in which we're going to run a route. So that's, that's, uh, that's the, the number two thing. And then really for me, you know, our offensive philosophy, we're going to be a balanced offense that's going to have that ability to, to create explosive plays with that attacking mindset. 
you know, we want to be the one that the foot's on the gas pedal, uh, we're going. And I know, I'm um, sure some of these questions will come up, the tempo and all that different stuff. Well, hey, there's going to be a wide variety of, of, of pieces to this offense, but that mindset is never going to change. And how we get to that is really going to be all based on the players because any of these, uh, any of these core beliefs really don't get off the ground without them. And so, you know, uh, I'll have this, this system of beliefs that we're going to walk in the door with. We're going to build it around that. And then the players are going to make that system come to life and, and what the final product's going to look like. You know, that's not going to be determined until that, that opening game where, Hey, these are the guys and, and this is how the puzzle pieces fit together. And shoot, there's a lot of guys that I'm excited to get to work with. Corbin Smith. Hi, Shane. Welcome to Seattle. Um, when Thank Brian you. Schottenheimer was hired back in 2018, Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll both talked about this, that 70, 75% of the offensive concepts were kept from the previous coaching staff. Do you envision there being a similar blend in your first year as the coordinator? Or are you looking to be a bit more ambitious with implementing your core concepts into the scheme? Sure. I, I wouldn't say more ambitious as much as, uh, you know, just I have a, a core set of beliefs that I'm going to stick to, uh, but we're going to build this thing together. And I think that, you know, the one thing with with uh, Russell and with the rest of the, the players that are on this team, you know, they, they have a great foundation and have won a lot of football games together. So there, there will there be parts of stuff that carries over? Absolutely. Because there's there's been some great things that they've done in the past. But for me, I'm, I'm really more worried about 2021. And, you know, there's a lot of things in the past that, that we all learn from. And I think we grow from those experiences. But really everything moving forward is going to be all about, about this year and how this group of players fits together, how this group of co uh, coaches fit together, and, and how we can attack that with that competitive mindset. Ben? Hey, Shane. Uh, first of all, welcome to Seattle. Um, Thank you. I was wondering, in what ways do you feel like your vision uh, for the Seahawks offense um, is in line with what both, you know, kind of Pete Carroll wants? He's kind of stated his desire to want to run the ball more, but also Russell Wilson, who's kind of said he, wa he wants to be able to do everything. How do you feel like maybe you can kind of marry those two desires uh, with, with kind of what you bring to the table? That's a great question. I, I think the, the balanced approach is really how I uh, – how I want to view this thing. And I think that that's, that's what really blends, you know, the ability to play good complementary football where, whether it's running the ball or, or understanding how the defense is uh, playing in, in a, in different games versus different offensive systems, how the special teams are playing and having that balanced approach, it's able to adjust and adapt depending on, on the style of the game or, or what uh, maybe the score might dictate in any particular game. And I think the, uh, the great part about, uh, Russell Wilson within this system is he does have a, an ability to do a lot of different things. And, you know, just because it's a, you know, I'm saying that it's a balanced attack doesn't mean that that's a uh, conservative attack. So I, I don't ever want to get that confused. So that'll really be the, uh, you know, the core philosophy that we, we live by as far as the, the starting point with, you know, run versus pass versus, you know, any other schematic things we want to get into. Uh, we want to be, we want to have that balanced approach. Thanks. Art? Um, <clears throat> Shane, you, uh, you grew up, obviously, in, in Portland in the late 90s when uh, Dennis Erickson and uh, Warren Moon and uh, Joey Galloway and Brian Blades were the big stars. What did you do? Were you a big fan of that team? And what did you do? What do you take away from those years? Yeah, no. Uh, well, I, I, can't, uh, I can't fudge this because I got some, some friends in Portland that would, that would say, uh, you know, you, you know, I don't know about that. I was, uh, you know, growing up, I was a huge uh, Blazers fan. So I know some of the Supersonics people in the uh, Seattle area will maybe get on me a little bit about that. Um, but I was, a, I was an NFL fan all around, uh, you know, probably growing up more, more, a, uh, you know, in, in the college football world, as far as, uh, you know, Oregon having uh, the Ducks and then, you know, the, uh, and the Beavers going there. So, but I, but I always followed these guys. I mean, from when I was a little kid with, uh, you know, Steve Largent and then moving on right up the ranks, to all the, the, the greats that have played up in Seattle. You know, I think it's uh, been something I've always followed and, uh, and something I'm looking forward to joining that, that, that family of fans with. Michael, Sean. 
Hey, Shane, kind of where are you on uh, some of the analytics that have become more popular in football that maybe emphasize uh, more passing, going for it more on fourth downs and, and things like that? I appreciate that. I think, uh, you know, like anything, this this game's always evolving, right? And it's uh, you always have to have that ability as a coach to adapt to to new new technologies, new ways of looking at things and always approaching that with an open mind. And And my philosophy with the analytical approach is, that I think there's some great things that have really opened up uh, our eyes as coaches as to, to what some approaches can be in, in different scenarios. But I also think there is at, at the, uh, in certain scenarios within the game, there's that great balance of what do the analytics uh, potentially tell you to do in that situation versus also what's the feel in the game and what are the variables that have changed uh, from a personnel standpoint within the game that, that might lead you to some different decisions whether it's a, uh, a, a chance on fourth down to go for it. You know, uh, to me, I, don't, I just think there's always a collaboration on those decisions. And I love using the analytics as the starting point and then be able to make smart, sound decisions based on the flow of a football game. Thanks. Greg Thank Bell. Hello, Shane. Greg Bell, the News Tribune, be writer. Welcome back. Greg, how you doing? I'm well, thank you. How much has Pete Carroll said specifically, we want to run play action, we want to feature the tight end more, we want to get the ball out more quickly, the things that we saw McVay's offense do with the Rams. How much is that directly what you intend to impact this offense? Well, I think, uh, you know, one thing I want to, you know, be uh, not to avoid questions, but also getting too team specific, you know, in the, in the, in the thing out of the gate here. Um, but I, but I do understand where you're coming from. And, and again, in my mind, that goes back to just having that ability where you're building a foundation of an offense that can utilize all 11 people. And, you know, I know, uh, you know, whether it's the tight end position, whether it's the running back position, the receivers, uh, you know, my, uh, approach philosophically is really trying to be able to get all 11 involved. And then obviously as you get specific into each game plan and, and it is a player driven league. So there are going to be certain guys that you're going to want to get the ball in their hands and, and into those playmakers hands uh, more than other guys. And, and that's the way it goes. And there'll be guys that have uh, roles that are complementary players. There'll be guys that have roles where they're maybe more impactful as far as, as touching the ball. But all of that stuff, I think comes together as, as we build this thing. And as, you know, going back to my, my belief in, uh, you know, starting with that balanced attack and, and having that attacking mindset, but then figuring out how the players all fit into the, how all, how all the players fit into the puzzle. And, and that's an ongoing process that, like I said, would, would really take us right to that first game to see, you know, exactly what everyone can do and, and uh, you know, not, not be held back by, by the thought of what, what can't someone do? I want to be moving forward and saying, you know, what can these guys do and, and look at it from that mindset and, and attack it that way. Joe Fan. Hey, Shane, I think when people are talking about offensive coordinators, evaluating offensive coordinators, the word creative or creativity comes up a whole lot. Is that an oversimplification or is that a fair uh, word that's a part of your job description as an offensive coordinator? Sure. I, I think you always need to have a pulse of the league and, and not just the league, but college football and, and high school football, because there's a, you know, I have a belief that you know, you can see some of the most creative football at the high school level, and then it trickles up to the college level and then up to the pros because, you know, you're talking about some scenarios in, in those settings where they're, they're, the playing field is not always equal, you know, and in pro ball, everyone is so close. I mean, the, the, the margin for error is so small. Everyone's so similar in, in, their, in their abilities. Um, so being able to bring out the best of their abilities is, is a huge part of it. And within that is where I think, you know, like I said, having a pulse of the league, having a pulse of, of what's going on in, in college football, where you can say, okay, here's our, here's our, uh, to your players and to, uh, and always to be open to discussions on things that are going on around, uh, throughout all of football. Bob. Um, yeah, Shane, uh, welcome to Seattle. Uh, just curious, did you, uh, did, did you have much of a relationship with Pete Carroll, uh, prior to this and, you know, did, did you reach out to him first about this or did they reach out to you? How did this sort of uh, process get started? You no, know, I've always just respected him from afar or from the opposite sideline. Uh, I've never had a chance to really uh, interact with him before they, uh, before Seattle had reached out. 
uh, to start this interview process. So uh, that, that was really the way this thing started. And, you know, my first experience uh, going against Coach Carroll was not a positive one. I was, I was fortunate to work with Charlie Weiss at Notre Dame as a graduate assistant when he was in his uh, USC days. And, you know, he, he got the better of us a, a couple times there. So, but that, that was uh, really the start of my really appreciation for him and, and as a head coach and as a, as a person, but it's all, all been from afar. And, and now this has been a chance to really start to develop that relationship. Curtis. Hey Shane, welcome to town. Um, just could, could you, if you could, could you kind of take us through the interview process, what it was like to, to speak with Pete about the job, your interest in it and all of that. And if uh, your kind of view of what Pete and this organization is kind of was altered at all from those conversations compared to what you've seen from afar. Yeah, the, uh, you know, different than, than, than most years, uh, there was a digital uh, interview process, so to speak. So there was a lot of, a lot of phone calls, a lot of FaceTime, Zoom, uh, elements to this process with him. Um, several days, uh, you know, over the course of several days, we, we spoke, uh, had some great conversations, starting with philosophy, uh, starting with the, you know, our, my history and, and really taking it all the way through things that he believed in. And, and at the end of this thing, really just making sure that, that we were aligned in, in how we view the game, how we view uh, things moving forward. And, you know, one of the big things that that I was excited about is just always seeing from from the outside looking in and, and knowing I feel like I'm coming from a, a football culture that was that was unbelievable, you know, with the people and the, the way everyone interacted and and the things that that I was able to be lucky enough to be a part of with the Rams. Uh, but always seeing like, hey, the, that that Seattle team has seems like they have a lot of the same core beliefs and then getting a chance to talk to to Pete about, uh, you know, his desire to just to feel the team that's, that's always based on that mindset of competing. And, uh, you know, that, that's such a, a key and, and critical factor in this and not just saying you're going to compete, but making everything that you're doing every day, uh, some form of a competition to look to improve and, and how we're going to get there. You know, this is where I, I think speaking with him about, you know, the development of people, and uh, trying to bring out the best version of everyone's self uh, is something that's really, you know, hits home for me. Uh, it's something I really believe in where, you know, it is a team game, but there's a lot of different special individuals uh, that, that make up a team. And, and so we talked a lot about, you know, working together and, and figuring out how you, you know, you can bring out the best version of every individual in the building. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to, to the players and the coaches doing the same for me and, and Coach Carroll, where we're all in this thing together and, and working towards that, that common, common goal. And so that's where, you know, talking through the interview process with him and, and uh, talked a lot of football, but we also talked a lot about some of those uh, core philosophical beliefs, which, which were in great alignment. Tim Booth. Hi, Shane. Um, I'm wondering if you have to have conversations with Russell during the interview process, um, and if not during the interview process, if since you're hiring, what the conversations have been like with him about direction and, and where you intend to take the offense. Yeah, really both. You know, I had a great chance to, to get to know him as a person, uh, talked a lot about uh, our families and, and just really getting to know each other more uh, as people, because I do think you know, the football part of it, that's, that's going to be an important part of it when the, the time's right. But, you know, our conversations really have centered around, uh, you know, just who we are as people, you know, because you're, you're, you're in a room with the, some, some guys for, for a lot of hours every day when that season gets rolling. And I think uh, that, that compatible uh, personality, you know, he seems like he has this, un, you know, unrelenting desire to be better, to, to be the best that he can be. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, when we started talking about those things, that's where it was uh, some really fun conversations. And, you know, a lot of those details I'll, I'll leave between uh, him and I. But th those are the things that, that we really talked about. And like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship based business. So the, the starting point for him and I was just trying to build that relationship, see how, how we would interact together. And, and uh, you know, when you're able to to, to, to sit there and have conversations that are natural and, and fluid and, and talk about everything and not just football. I think that's a great foundation for where this 
where this uh, this relationship can go. Brady. Shane, Brady Henderson, uh, congratulations on the job. Um, with being a, a first-time play caller in the NFL, what, what does that challenge seem like to you, and what have you learned from Sean uh, McVay about that? Yeah, it's, it's a great challenge, and it's a challenge that I've been preparing for my whole life. And so I, I think it's one of those things that I'm, I'm ready to get going with and, and excited to attack that opportunity. Uh, I've learned a ton from Sean along the way. Uh, with, with that play calling experience, he's, he's allowed me the, the opportunity to do it in, in different settings, whether it's the preseason or, or scrimmages or practices. So I've had a, a, a little uh, a hand in it that way, uh, knowing that that's obviously not the, the real deal and there's going to be uh, that opportunity here coming up. But like I said, I, I, it's just one of those things where I feel like, you know, the, the, I'm a, I'm a guy that likes to prepare. I want to be organized. I want to have a, a really consistent approach. And to, in my mind that, that, that preparation began a long time ago and, and I can't wait for this chance to go ahead and, and do it. Adam. What's up, Shane? Hey, a uh, couple quick questions going way back to your days at, uh, at Tufts. Um, Coach Samco there said he thought you were good enough as a long snapper to maybe have a shot at, at playing in the league. Is that something you pursued at all after college? And then secondly, I know you and Coach Samco have remained pretty close over the years. Yeah. What, what kind of example was he for you? What has is, what is he meant for your, your coaching career? Yeah, no, he, yeah, he's been way too kind. I, I wish I was a better football player than I was. I love football and, and you know, played it as long as I could in different, different aspects. But, uh, you know, I knew I was going to be, be coaching, uh, when the, uh, the talent didn't match the, uh, ambitions there. So I appreciate that. But, you know, the thing that coach Samco really always reiterated to us and taught me, it was work, you know, uh, nothing, there's no uh, shortcuts to this process. Uh, whatever you're doing in life. When I told him I was going to get into coaching, he said, you better be ready to work. You know, when we were playing for him, that's, that's the foundation of his belief system. And, you know, when he, when I was uh, able to get this job, one of the first texts I got from him was, you know, say, Hey, that work, a reminder, this is, this is what it's going to take. So he's always had a great influence and an impact in, in uh, what I've believed as a coach and, and really just that, that mindset of, of that hard work and, and things that, you know, different people from my dad on through have, have tried to instill in me. And, and uh, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a pretty simple formula. Nico? Uh, yes, Shana. Welcome to Seattle. Uh, Nico Moreno. Uh, wanted to ask you, in terms of, as they mentioned uh, earlier today, being a first-time uh, play caller, that offensive coordinator title comes with some of those other scrutiny, a lot of uh, responsibility. How do you think you could, you know, deal with maybe some of that pressure that sometimes comes with that position? Yeah, I think, uh, in, in my mind, pressure's earned. And so there, there is pressure in this business. It's a... Uh, it's a business that's driven by results. And so the way I look at that is I'm excited that to, uh, you know, to have had people that have supported me along the way that have put me in a, a position that, that I can have a chance to, to go in and earn uh, the right to call these plays. And like I said, that, that pressure is a privilege and it's part of it and, and something that I'm never gonna shy away from and always, gonna, and always wanna go with that attacking mindset. Masvida. Yeah. Hey, Shane, welcome home, I guess. Um, question oh. for you. The Seahawks, Seahawks had 41 uh, run plays that were of 12 yards or more, and 26 of those ended in a touchdown. From a philosophical perspective, how do you create long running plays in the run game? Or do you count on those? Just from a philosophical perspective, how do you sheen that? Sure. I think the, the biggest thing, you know, obviously every run play is going to get started with the guys up front, you know, and, and their ability, whether it's the, uh, you know, the O line and the tight ends, uh, you know, the ability to get that play started. And then, you know, the next part of that is, is the backs ability and making sure that the backs are, are on the right track and have a great vision of what the linemen are trying to do, how they understand how to set those blocks. And then the second and third level of that is going to be whether it's the, the receivers are tight ends downfield in that takes all 11 mentality to go ahead and say, I'm going to be that guy that springs someone on a touchdown block. And then, you know, one, you know, that's always going to be the mindset, right? Everyone has a job on every single run play. They fit into it in a specific way that's, that's designed to get that play to a certain level in the defense. 
And then there's always going to be, you know, it's a numbers game, right? And that, that, that quarterback's not necessarily lead blocking anyone uh, anytime soon in, in the, uh, in an NFL system. So that, that's where it's going to be talking to the backs about that slash running and those abilities to attack an edge and work an edge on a defender, because there's going to be a point in time on any explosive run where the, the back's going to have to take over and either make one miss or run somebody over, uh, which, which is just part of the, part of the game and part of the, part of their job and how they fit into the scheme. Thank you. Brady. Hey Shane, well, we asked you about your conversations with Russell during the interview process, but what about just the opportunity to work with, with him as a quarterback? Yeah, he's a, uh, he's an exciting guy to get to work with. I, I, you know, he's a guy that uh, just like uh, coach Carroll, just that, that utmost uh, respect from afar, from the opposite sideline, you know, a guy that anytime it, it, in any situation in the game, when, you know, I've been on the offensive side of the ball, but you peek up and you're just saying, man, at, at any point, this guy can explode and, and create a game winning play. And, you know, he's the type of quarterback that, you know, I, I, which I, which I love that. I don't think there's any scenario that he's probably entered in life where he thought he was going to fall short. And, you know, he's got that mindset that he's going to be the best. Uh, he's going to attack every day, uh, preparing himself to be the best. And that, that's really the, uh, the exciting part about it, you know, from a, uh, positional standpoint you know he can make every throw you need to make he can run any part of any offense that, that you want to get to and and so I think the best thing for for us is going to be really finding out you know with this marriage you know where where we fit together what things he loves what things uh fit offensively and 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 then moving forward from there but it couldn't be more excited to work with him Michael Sean and Shane, what were you primarily responsible for as the passing game coordinator uh, under Sean? Yeah, kind of wore a, a lot of different hats in that role, uh, especially, you know, each different year, uh, whether it was from, you know, the, you know, being uh, responsible for some of the situational aspects of every game, uh, being on the, on the line with him throughout the course of the game, uh, game planning throughout the week, all different areas. Uh, so really, uh, Kind of had a broad stroke in that thing and, and a lot of different different things throughout the week and and uh different things that would pop up throughout every year thanks all right last two here shane greg bell okay shane, you kind of touched on it um what is already as you've learned already about what exists in seattle the system the personnel they have and what pete carroll's philosophy is how much how closely is that aligned to what you do and what you want to do I think, I think that, you know, that was really the, uh, in my opinion, uh, what was so natural about the interview process was that there was so much uh, philosophical alignment uh, between he and I, uh, you know, going back to just that, that starting point of, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, ask, you know, where's the starting point for our offense saying, Hey, it's all about the ball. Well, you know, lo and behold, what's, what's his starting point, you know? And so some of those, those, those core philosophies, you know, I like that. I, I had mentioned this to him. It wasn't like a, an interview where you're trying to sell yourself to, uh, to win the job in any sort of sales pitch. It was a conversation and it was a, uh, you know, a, a football discussion that, that had so many things in alignment, uh, that, that it felt just, it felt like a natural, uh, progression as we got to know each other and, and talk through things. And, and so, so many of those things were just naturally in alignment. And that's where I, I think it felt really good about the process. Last one, uh, Jackie. Hey, Shane, uh, your Rams colleague, Andy Dickerson, is going to be joining you in Seattle. Did you play any role in him coming up to Seattle? And how does he kind of fit into this coaching um, scheme that you and the offensive philosophy you want to implement? Yeah, I would say uh, probably had a little influence on, on him making his way up to Seattle. Uh, he's been a not only a great friend, but a a great coach that I've had a chance to work with for a lot of years, you know, going all the way back to, uh, in, you know, some intern days in new England. And, uh, then we were, uh, apart from each other, but always stayed in touch. Uh, we have a great circle of, uh, chain of friends that have been a part of, uh, our lives through, through all these, uh, coaching stops. And so Andy and I have been able to continue both a friendship and a, and a coaching relationship, you know, dating all the way back to the, uh, the late nineties, I guess. And so, uh, when there was a chance for 
uh, me to have a, a, you know, talking with coach Carol, Hey, is there someone that we can potentially bring with you that would, that would be uh, instrumental in helping you uh, uh, in this transition? You know, my, my first, my first uh, thought was Andy and then it, it timed up with the, the way everything worked out. So he'll be able to come on board as the run game coordinator uh, and he'll be instrumental in, in helping uh, with the transition and, and really, like I said, you know, the chance to, to blend with Mike and, and get things uh, kind of all connected and, and marry everything that we want to do together uh, philosophically. All right. Thanks, Coach. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Thanks, guys. Thank you.